Okay, so for the second part of the module, we're gonna take a look of a little bit about the mathematics that are actually involved in chemistry. And this really falls in line with chemical reactions in a sense, even though we won't actually get to that aspect of it. And one of the big sort of mathematical aspects in the world of chemistry deals with what is known as the mole and what is known as molar mass. And in this part, we're gonna introduce you to what is known as the mole. Okay, so if I were to say to you, go to the store, go to the supermarket and buy a dozen eggs. When you probably hear me say that pretty quickly, what probably comes to mind is that you're going to the store to buy 12 eggs. Because when you hear the term dozen, you equate that to a number of 12. So essentially in terms of counting units, a counting term states a specific number of items. In other words, a dozen equates to 12. You know, sometimes a ream reflects 500 sheets of paper. I think a ream is a little more specific than what a dozen, you know, a dozen could be a dozen eggs, a dozen innings, you know, a dozen pencils. You know, there's, there's many different ways a dozen, you know, could be used. You know, I think a ream usually refers to paper or something like that. Um, another example would be a pair. You know, if you say, pick a pair or get a pair or whatever the case is, um, that refers to two, you know, pair of legs, you know, um, pair of pencils, you know, many different ways as you could equate, you know, a pair, but essentially meaning two. Well, small particles such as atoms, molecules, and ion slash formula units are counted using what is known as the mole. So sometimes, yes, we count atoms individually, we count molecules individually, we count ions, and what we'll talk about is formula units individually as well. And you could even count them in pairs, and you could even count them in dozens. But a lot of times in chemistry, the way that atoms, molecules, and ions slash formula units are counted is by the mole. Now, when we say a mole, what does that represent? Well, that actually represents 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd items. Whatever it is, atoms, molecules, eggs, pieces of paper, you know, whatever the case is, if you get a mole of something, you're getting 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of that item. Now, this 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is actually a constant known as Avogadro's number. So on the slide here, they give you the long way of writing it out. But of course, we'd be able to express this in scientific notation, which is basically what we want to do. So we would write it out as 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power. So let's talk a little bit about the way that atoms, molecules, and you know, things are counted in the world of organic chemistry. So for the most part, when you deal in terms of elements, okay. So for example, one, more, one mole of aluminum or one mole of sulfur, essentially we're referring to atoms of that element. Okay, so if I said go to the lab and get one mole of aluminum, you would bring me back 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of aluminum. You know, if I said for the second example, go to the lab and get me a mole of sulfur, you would bring me back 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sulfur. So in essence, when we're looking at elements and we're looking at a mole of that element, we are essentially looking at atoms of that element. And even if you were, you know, and that's sort of the way of thinking about it in a sense. Now, if we're looking at, let's say covalent compounds, which is our next two examples here, water and vitamin C. If I said, go to the lab and get me one mole of water or go to the lab and get me one mole of vitamin C, then what would you bring me? You would bring me molecules of that compound. So when we look at covalent compounds, we are essentially looking at molecules of that compound. So if I said, go to the lab and get me one mole of water, H2O, you would bring me back 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. 
same lines, if I said get one mole of vitamin C, go to the lab and get me one mole of vitamin C, you would bring me 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of vitamin C. And then finally, for ionic compounds, if I said to you, go to the lab and get me a mole of an ionic compound, the way we would count that is in terms of what is known as formula units. So covalent compounds are made up essentially of molecules of that compound. Ionic compounds are made up of formula units of that compound. So if I said, go to the lab and get me one mole of sodium chloride, which is an ionic compound, you would bring me 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of sodium chloride. So this is some of the differences in terms of counting atoms such as atoms, such items such as atoms, molecules, and formula units. Okay. Now, when we talked about chemical formulas previously, we talked about the fact that essentially the chemical formulas tell you the number of atoms if you're looking at a covalent compound, or if you're looking at an ionic compound, the number of ions in a chemical formula. Well, it turns out that the subscripts in a chemical formula not only show you the relationship of atoms, and we should also add or ions in the formula in terms of counting individually, but it also shows the number of moles of each element in one mole of that compound. Take a look at a couple of examples. Aspirin, a covalent compound, has the chemical formula of C9H8O4. If essentially you're looking at one molecule of aspirin, singular molecule, right? And again, you know, if you look at a singular molecule of aspirin, that molecule would contain nine atoms of carbon, eight atoms of hydrogen, and four atoms of oxygen. Because in that sense, we would be counting individually. If you're looking at one molecule, then you're counting at, you're essentially counting individually. But on the other hand, let's say we had one mole of aspirin. Now we know that one mole of aspirin would be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of aspirin. In that number of molecules, you would have nine moles of carbon atoms, eight moles of hydrogen atoms, and four moles of oxygen atoms. And where would we get that from? We would again get that from the chemical formula. So the chemical formula tells us the relationship of the atoms present in this covalent compound, whether you're counting per molecule individually in a sense, or whether you're counting by the mole. In fact, that ratio is actually independent of the method of counting. The ratio is always the same. In this case, it would be nine to eight to four, carbon to hydrogen to oxygen. Let's look at another example. Suppose you had one mole of calcium Calcium nitride. I had to think about that for a second. Suppose you had one point, you had one mole of calcium nitride, chemical formula of Ca3N2, which is an ionic compound. Now that would also equate to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units. Of calcium nitride. And in that one mole, that one mole would contain three moles of calcium two plus ions and two moles of nitrogen minus three ions. Now, if you were looking essentially at one formula unit of Ca3N2, you would have three you would have three calcium two plus ions 
and you would have two nitrogen minus three ions. If you're looking at a singular formula unit. But if you're looking at one mole of Ca3N2, where you'd be looking at 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units, you would have three moles of Ca2 plus ions and two moles of N minus three ions. Again, the, the ratio here based on the chemical formula is independent of the method of counting. So if you go back and look at covalent, you know, one mole would be, one mole with this number of molecules would have nine moles of the different atoms. In this case for the ionic compound, one mole of this compound, which would be this 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units are made up of three moles of uh, the different number of moles of ions, not atoms, but ions.